Hi there and welcome back to the AgriRouter API developer tutorial. My name is Frank and in this video I'm going to show you how we sense the capabilities and analyze the result. So let's see. If we want to send up routings between endpoints, we first have to send the capabilities. To check if we already did that, we can go to routing, click on the plus, select the standard group, and if we go to information type, no, there is no information type available. This means there has not been any capability sent. Why I took the standard group, you can see this in the video where we talk about the basics of routing. Okay, so now the question is, how can we send the capabilities? I have already prepared a small example code, a small example program that loads the onboarding response that we received with the onboarding request that we did in the other video. And now we want to do this. We want to send the capabilities for bitmaps, so we want to be able to send bitmaps and for task data, so we want to be able to send and receive task data. Now let's first check if we really use the same endpoint as in the UI. If we check our sensor alternate ID, it begins with A6E and ends with 64C. And if we look onto the website and the info, then you can see the endpoint ID here is beginning with A6E and ending with 64C. So I'm pretty sure that this is our endpoint. Of course, you can compare the whole value if you want to. Okay, let's jump in and build some code. So if we want to send our capabilities, we need some capability service. I think it's a set capability service. And we need to build a new one. And again, we use the implementation. We need the environment. And we have our capability service. This capability service has to send a message. And this message includes parameters. So let's see, what do we have to create? Uh, set capabilities parameters. So let me move that one up here for a little better organization. And it's a new set capabilities parameters. So what do we have to set in these parameters? Of course, we have to set our onboarding response. We read our onboarding response with this function above. I don't want to go into the details. It just loads the file from the resource and then we use JSON to import it to an onboarding response. So, fairly simple. Then we need parameters.set. What else do we need? Oh yeah, we need the application ID and I already created a variable for that. So let's say application ID. Yes, we created a variable for that. Parameters set. We need the certification version ID. And we have a variable for that as well. Then what else do we need? Dot set. We have to set the capabilities parameters and that's a list of capability parameters. Let's see what that is. Okay. We create a local variable, move it a little bit up and it's a new array list. So if we leave that one empty, we wouldn't add 
any capabilities, so I think we have to add some capability parameters. Let's see which parameters we have to set. That should be two. We have to set the technical message type and we have to set the direction. So if we want to set the technical message type, we simply go technical message type and we can select the one that we want. We want to start with bitmap, so IMG underscore BMP, which stands for image bitmap. And we want to send that one. So if we say direction, set direction, we can use the direction send. Now, now let me simply split this one into declaration and assignment. Because this way we can add our parameter to the parameter list. And we can simply copy and paste that one to create our second parameter, the task data. All we have to change is the technical message type. Yes. And we want to send and receive that one. So now we added our parameters to the list of capability parameters. We added the parameter list to our parameters. Additionally, what we can do is we can activate the push notifications by saying parameters dot set enable push notifications. And the correct value would be push notification dot enabled or enabled high frequency if you want to receive the messages in a shorter time distance. In the current implementation, enabled and enabled high frequency are the same. They have the same result, but in the future, enabled high frequency will deliver the data a little bit faster. So what we want to do is we want to use the disabled because we don't need this and the disabled is already the default value so we can even remove this whole point I just wanted to show you that this is available as well. Now the sending of the message is done. But if we send a message, we also assume that there should be any result. So let's try to catch some result. We use our fetch message service. And we should receive a response list, or let's say we perhaps should receive a response list. So let's call it optional response list equals fetch message service dot fetch. Of course, we need parameters, so our onboarding response as we used before. And then we have to say how many tries we want to give it. So how many HTTP calls at a maximum we want to create until we say no, that didn't work or we didn't receive any answer. And I think let's just say we want to do 12 of them and each of them may take up to five seconds so 5,000 milliseconds. So you basically wait up to one minute 
to receive a result. Of course, we have to declare our vari variable here. And it's, yeah, it's an optional list and it includes a response. So the name was quite good, I think. So let's first check if there was any response. And if there is any response, then we want our response list to be the result. So to get. Again, we have to declare that one. Now, we could receive multiple responses. So, for example, if you request messages or if you send multiple commands, then you could receive multiple answers in one request. But I'm pretty sure that here we only have one result. So we can just use as a response the very first entry. Now we have our fetch message response and let's take a look what we can receive here. We can get the command and the sensor alternate ID and we can get the capability alternate ID. So as we are pretty sure which kind of command we will receive, we don't really care about the sensor alternate and capability alternate ID here. So we can simply use the get command And we import that one as well. And now let's see what our message includes. On the one hand, we have the message. And on the other hand, we have the timestamp. So we can check when this message was created. For our example, we don't really care about the timestamp. So we can simply say get message. It's a string now we received the single message but this is not something that you can just print out because this is a base 64 encoded protobuf object so we have to decode that one and how do we decode something by using a decode message service So we receive a decoded message. If we use our decode message service and decode our message string. And let's see what we got here. We can get our response envelope and we can get the response payload wrapper. Now, the payload wrapper is only understandable if we know what the envelope is like. So let's first check our envelope. And what can we get from our envelope? We can get the type, we can get a message ID, we can get the application message ID. So for us, basically the most important one is the get type. And if you have sent multiple messages and you want to assign this result to the message you send, you will need the application message ID because that's the ID that you provide to the Agri router when sending your command. And when you receive the result, the application message ID will equal that one that you used when sending the message. Okay, but we want to check our type. 
Well, let's just use the switch statement and check what we could get. Okay, we could get an acknowledgement. That's the most easy one. Then we can simply say everything worked. And we're done. We could get an egg with messages. So this also means everything worked, but And the button means we received some message from AgriRooter. So we should also output that message. The message can be found in the payload. So we say decoded message.get payload wrapper dot to string. You will see that it's not just a string but a JSON object. But for our test, that's okay. Now what else? Oh, Equus failure. Hopefully we'll never get that one, but it could happen. So we have to output that something went wrong. Now, that's it. We have created our capability command and sent our capability command to our endpoint where we read the onboarding response and we fetch the result. Now, let's just try what happens if we run that one. We get a lot of results. Here is our message that we sent. And here we received the result. And oh, something went wrong. What happened here? It says invalid application. Hmm. Maybe that's our application ID. Yep, of course. I added some code here to show you that an error could occur. And let's remove that one. I will show you, show you in the agri-router UI that you still cannot set any routings. Nope, there's nothing you can do here. So I think we have to rerun our code. Oh, everything worked. That sounds a little bit better. So it might take some time until this is forwarded to the AgriRouter user interface, up to five minutes. But let's see if we are lucky. Let's just reload the page, go to our routings, go to plus, Select our standard group. And here we go. We can select images and we can select task data. We can select both here because we decided that we can send images and send and receive task data. So for comparison, let's turn it and try to receive something. If we now click on plus, we select the standard group as sender, then we can only receive task data. Okay. Now, if I select that one, confirm, confirm, anyone who is on the standard group can send us task data. And last but not least, let's see what happens if we send the message just again. Here we go, everything worked, but so we received an egg with messages and the message says 
skipping capability update because there is no difference. So it recognized that this capability was already available and that there has not been any changes, so it doesn't use it. Okay, so that's how you set up capabilities for an endpoint on the agri-router. In the next video, we're gonna start with sending a file. Thank you for watching and hoping to see you in the next video.